don't tell my therapist, but sometimes I really fucking hate therapy. I have been in therapy for going on three years now, which is crazy to me. I have tried therapy in the past, like when I was younger and lasted one or two sessions, tried another one, lasted a couple sessions, but like never really committed to therapy in the way that I have with my current therapist. Committing to therapy has absolutely changed my life in amazing ways, but there are definitely parts of it that I cannot stand. Has it actually ruined my life? No, but are there parts of it that annoy me and that aren't so pleasant and that I don't like? Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna get into all of that. The pros and cons of therapy and why I really hate it sometimes. <laughs> like, I can't stand it sometimes. Okay, do we wanna do the pros or the cons first? Let's do the cons. Let's get the negativity out of the way and we'll save the best for last. Okay, one of the main cons for me is that in my opinion, too much self-awareness can be crippling and psychotherapy, at least, forces you to become extremely self-aware. If you can't figure it out on your own through therapy, your therapist will tell you what it is. And once you become aware of something, you can't just like unsee it or unhear it. Once you become too aware, it can really get to you. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Okay, it's a little embarrassing. So. I have this thing where I don't like befriending trios. I've always hated being in like my friendship relationships with um, like two other people. Like we're like a trio. I've always had really bad experiences and I've just never really known why. I just feel really uncomfortable. I always feel left out. Like I just, I don't enjoy it. And it's always gone really shit in the past. When she unpacked this, it came down to like, of course, like feeling left out, not feeling like enough, feeling insecure, like, all these things that I just like didn't really consider. Like she even brought it back to like my relationship with my sister and feeling like, you know, maybe belittled because I'm the younger sibling. Like random things, right? Like that I had never considered. Feeling like I have to prove myself in this friendship dynamic. And like, I was just like, whoa, lower your voice. <laughs> like relax, you know? I was just like, what are you talking about? It actually irritated me. Cause I'm like, no, it's just that they connect better than I do. And she's like, but do they? Or do you tell yourself that because of the insecurity that you feel in this dynamic? I'm like, no, they get a lot better. <laughs> like, do you like self-sabotage and take yourself out of the equation to like, bitch. <laughs> I'm not calling her a bitch, I love her. But I was just like, girl, I need you to relax. Like things like that where you're just like, Sometimes ignorance is bliss and I just don't want to know. Being too self-aware can also be a problem because it can come down to knowing better and not doing better. When you're very self-aware, you usually know where your flaws are. So you know where your downfalls are, you know what the problem is, you know when you're the problem. So for example, let's say you become very self-aware of you being in a relationship with somebody that's not like good for you or your bad habits or something that you do that's not good then when you have too much awareness on like, yeah, this is bad, this is terrible for me, and you just don't do anything, it's like you start to hate yourself. Because then the problem is like, I know better and I'm not doing better, and then you just get really upset. Another problem with too much self-awareness is that when you become aware of all of your flaws, like you just start to not like yourself. Like just existing day by day is pretty chill. <laughs> like it's, it's fine. You know, but once you start realizing that you're a really defensive person or that you have a problem with this or that you're, you have insecurities in this or that you have jealousy issues, whatever. Like these are not all things I resonate with. These are just examples. Once you start realizing your negative traits, like you start to just be really down on yourself because you're just like, damn, like how do I fix this? And if you don't know how to fix it yet and you haven't like unpacked it yet, you just kind of like sit there and you're like, I don't like this part of myself. I, I hate this part of myself and it's not fun. Like it actually like can really get you down and you have to really check yourself um, because everybody has negative flaws and traits but we're just not all aware of them and i'm still discovering some to this day where i'm like i didn't realize that was a problem that i had like i just learned that i'm drawn to emotionally unavailable men i never realized that <laughs> i never i never noticed that and i'm just like oh okay well shit. <laughs> So it's not fun, that part is not fun. Another con is disagreeing with your therapist can really mess with your head because you feel like they're always gonna know best, but sometimes they don't. At the end of the day, they don't live in your brain. They're not you, they don't live your everyday life. And you have to have enough awareness to be able to differentiate an, a professional opinion versus what reality really is, you know what I mean? 
But sometimes it's hard to do that because you're like, you know, like she knows best. What she's saying must be true. And sometimes it's not. Not in the sense of like they're lying to you, more just like they don't know your full situation sometimes or they don't know you the way that you do or they don't know the person you're talking about. And it's really difficult when you're dealing with somebody that you're talking about in therapy, but they don't know this person. So like you can't explain everything about them, but they, they just hear what they hear. And you know, it's, it's difficult because then you're like, am I being delusional just not listening to my therapist? Or is she just wrong? And like sometimes it's okay for them to be wrong. Like sometimes they can be wrong and I'm sure they know that they're not always right, but it's up to you to build enough self-awareness and understand when your therapist might not be right. Like sometimes her and I disagree on things and that's all that can be, it can be disagreeing. Like for example, something that's very important to me is finding a black husband. I would love to get married to someone that is a black man. I'm open to dating outside my race. I am, I definitely am. I'm the byproduct of a biracial couple, but ideally I would love to have a black husband. And you know, we disagree on that in therapy. Uh, she's not a black woman, so she doesn't understand the importance of it and why it's important to me. She definitely doesn't say that it's like bad or anything. She like gets it, but she's also like, you know, she might say that I'm being closed-minded. I disagree with that. I don't believe that I'm being closed-minded because there's so much that comes with being a black woman that raises a black family that I, I don't want to have to put in the extra work to do that with a partner outside of my race. So yeah, you know, I've explained that to her. We disagree and she wants me to open up my you know my dating preferences and they are open I just like I know what I'm looking for but if I fall in love with an Asian or Hispanic or Indian man I'm okay with that I just have my preferences so that's an example of something you might disagree on and sometimes you just have to be like look in the mirror and be like no this is how I feel and that's okay if it doesn't resonate with what she's saying like that's that's fine but it's difficult sometimes okay this is one of the things I hate the most about therapy is that <sighs> Oh my God. Arguing with people and dealing with people that are not therapized or working on themselves in another way is exhausting. And it feels like you're talking to a wall. When people don't have enough self-awareness, they cannot carry this conversation. They can't hold this conversation. They, ca they can't partake in it at all because you're trying to tell them like, hey, you're being defensive. And they're just like, I'm not being defensive. How am I being defensive? If somebody tells me I'm being defensive, I'll be like, okay, how do you feel like I'm being defensive? Can you tell me and explain it to me? Cause I don't see it personally. Like I'll ask them to explain it to me. I'll listen to them. And if I agree with them, I'll be like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I am being defensive. You're right. Or I'll say, you know what? I don't think I'm being defensive, but I, A, B, and C, you know, we can have a conversation, but when you're dealing with people who are not into personal development or in therapy, it's like you're talking to a wall and it's exhausting and you seem like the annoying person who's too calm and too this, cause like, I don't get angry really. So when I'm having a conversation with people, I I would say that I'm a very good communicator. I, I really believe that. And when I'm talking to other people, I feel like I'm having to put in a lot of work and I feel like sometimes I'm talking to a teenager. It's really difficult. And you just feel like you have all this awareness and all the tools and you're like, this is like, this conversation could be so easy if you just, worked with me on it, but people don't have that understanding. And they, the people that are not in therapy, I find they just, they, they can't do that sometimes. And you just, you see how a conversation could go. Like in your head, you're like, if both of us choose to navigate this conversation from a healthy place, it could be a five minute conversation slash discussion, maybe a one minute argument, and then we can resolve it. But if only one person is pulling that weight and the other person is explosive and emotionally reactive and defensive and this and that, it's gonna turn into a two hour argument and I don't have the emotional capacity to deal with that. And I just go crazy because I'm like, this could be so easy. You'll realize how many people lead with their emotions. You tell someone something and they blow up and you're like, hold on. <laughs> it that has to be my biggest pet peeve. Like that is one thing that therapy has ruined for me. Like. With therapized people, it's beautiful and I love and I'm so grateful for the tools it's given me. But when I'm dealing with non-therapized people, I feel like before I could have just been like back and forth with them and it would have been fine with me. Now I'm like, I can't do that. Another thing that bothers me, it's harder to get along with people that aren't on a similar journey. So therefore your dating pool and your friendship pool is smaller 
because you're gonna feel like and I don't want to make it seem like people who are in therapy are better and like people that are not in therapy and don't have access to free therapy and stuff like can't get to this level of awareness you absolutely can so when I say you're not a similar journey I don't mean like you have to be in therapy I mean more so like just work on yourself build that awareness within yourself right so it's harder to get along with people because you feel just like I don't know, maybe like just like more mature I don't know like emotionally like yeah it's just like harder to get along with them I feel like there's not much to relate on I feel like I don't want to put in the extra work to communicate with people who can't like meet me halfway I just feel like it's more work and I don't really feel like doing that another thing that I don't like is seeing what people need to work on and just watching them do nothing about it like I think one of the main things is just watching defensive people be defensive I'm just like yo if you just like put your guard down and put your pride aside like you could be a much better human for yourself and for others, but you want to sit here and be like, no, I'm not. I'm not that. I didn't do that. I didn't say that. Victimizing yourself. Like, I think that's the main thing that I come across is defensive people. I also see when people are ranting about their partners and they're telling me about their issues and I see that they're the problem and I try to help them become aware of that. And it's like, no, because he does this and but he, but this and that. Or like when people are getting cheated on and I see it and it's so clear and like, you know, they just like, don't see it like it's like you see that there's a lot of people walking around this earth being delusional in every area of life seeing that happen and trying to help them and them choosing to live in a delusional state is quite frustrating so i decided to keep my mouth shut most of the time and meet people where they're at i do that sometimes those are not the people that i keep close to me because i can't do that but if it's a co-worker an acquaintance a peer I'll just listen to them and meet them where they're at and that's it because it's not my job to help people see themselves better at all times like it's just if you want to go on that journey get into therapy or go buy a journal or go buy some self-help books or something but I'm I'm not a therapist I'm not the one so figure it out okay another thing I don't like is that people like think that you think that you're better than them because you're in therapy and maybe this video makes it seem like I feel that way and I don't at all because I understand that therapy is expensive and not everybody can be in it but I do believe that we have enough resources online to get to a similar level as somebody who's in treatment you know like buy a book listen to a podcast listen to an audiobook get a journal something but people think that because like oh she's in therapy when you're like trying to like dissect them or talk to them it's like oh like are you trying to therapize me? Are you doing that? like people talk like that all the time? Or oh, because you think you're in therapy, like you know this and this. I'm like, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. Sometimes no, I'm just trying to be a friend. And if you don't want me to do that, I won't. It's annoying, especially when you're trying to just ask people questions. Like if I say, if God forbid, I say like, how does that make you feel? That's a very normal question to ask somebody. But it's like, what are we in therapy? You would not say that to me if I wasn't in therapy. Like you're just saying that because you know that that's probably what my therapist says to me, and you're rejecting. But yeah, like if I say, how does that make you feel? Or are you okay with that? Or blah, 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 blah. It's like people get really triggered. It's really weird. So I just try to avoid that statement. But sometimes I genuinely just want to know how does that make you feel, you know? But people get very triggered. All right, enough negativity. Let's get into some positives of being in therapy. And there are some, I promise you. Pros. This is like common sense, but just the level of understanding you have for yourself, that is just a beautiful beautiful thing to have i look back at the relationship that got me into therapy and i think damn like i mean everything happens for a reason but i just think damn like i wish i was in therapy when i was in that relationship because i would have understood everything so much clearer i would have understood myself so much better but everything happens for a reason so yeah like you just start to understand yourself in a way that like i don't know maybe it's psychotherapy i don't know but I love psychotherapy it's like you just figure out why you do what you do where this comes from where it started just layers to it you know what i mean it is such a beautiful thing that is really hard to acquire on your own it's possible but it's more work okay another one that i love is learning how to effectively communicate i feel like i didn't know how to communicate before therapy at all at all having arguments in past relationships i would just shut down or I would be very defensive, very defensive. Or I would react emotionally, like I would match the energy. So if I came at somebody calmly and they popped off on me, then I would be like, what is your problem? Why are you reacting? You know what I mean? Now I'll be like, hey, like, are you good? Like what's going on? Like, 
why did you react that way? Like, did I say something? Was it my tone? Like, I try to figure out, like, is there something I did? You know, like, I, I take it slower now. And I don't really emotionally react the way that I used to. I learned how to talk through things. Like, communication to me, I really feel like therapy changed my life with that. Because even when I speak to my family now, it's different. Like, dealing with any arguments I have with friends, I now know how to approach those. If I'm upset, I know how to approach it. I've never shied away from confrontation, but I wasn't always good at it. Now I feel like I'm good at confrontation. If I need to call somebody out for something, I can. And I know how to do these things without getting emotional, angry, sad, etc. So yeah, communication, like especially when I'm dealing with somebody that has been in treatment or is working on themselves, it's a, it's a fucking breeze. It's a breeze and I'm so grateful for that. The ability to be introspective is something else that I've gained. I didn't know how to like sit and reflect on myself and my actions and everything before. Now I feel like I, I can really do that. Like I can dig deep, you know, I can sit down. I can, I'll literally sit like this right here and I'll stare at a wall and I'll be like, I got really upset today. Why did I get upset? I do it a lot in the car. So what will happen now? I'll give you an example. So dealing with boys, let's say, right? For example, if I have discovered that I have an anxious attachment style, I used to have a secure one. I now have an anxious one. So I hadn't heard from somebody in a while and my mind started to just kind of do things. Like that day in particular, I'm not typically that anxious when it comes to like where my partner's at my i'm single by the way just let me get that out there i'm single very single so my mind started racing for a minute because the situation was very complicated and i just kind of was like thinking like i was anxious my stomach was in knots so i turned the music down when i was driving and i was like i literally talk out loud to myself i'll be like okay ashley why are you anxious and i'll answer my own question but like, okay i'm anxious because I haven't heard from this person and I feel like maybe this and maybe that and maybe this. Why do you feel that they would do this? Oh, I feel that way because in the past this and this and this, does that have to do with them? No, it doesn't have to do with them. I literally ask myself questions out loud and I answer them out loud. <laughs> and then I'll be like, okay, no. So why do you feel like this? Well, I guess I feel like this because blah, 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 blah. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't really make sense. Are you making assumptions? Yes, I'm making assumptions. What do you know? I know this, this and this. Okay, so. Blah, blah, blah. And I'll talk myself through it until the knots in my stomach go away. And I'm like, I know nothing. I'm making assumptions. My anxiety is coming from an insecurity that I have that has nothing to do with this person. And let me just wait this out until I know what the situation is. And then by the time I talk to the person, everything's fine. And I just spent like all that time being anxious for no reason. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I tortured myself. <laughs> so now, me torturing myself lasts like a, like a way shorter amount of time. Like before I might sit in anxiety for eight hours. Now I'll sit in anxiety for like 20 minutes and then I'll talk myself through it. And then I'll be like, okay, let me just relax. So, so yeah, therapy gave me the gift of being introspective. Another positive is that it gives me the place to dissect my emotions out loud. So of course I do that with myself, like I just mentioned, but doing it with somebody else is so helpful. Like you can go into there and tell them why you're feeling anxious and they'll break that down with you and they'll help you through it. Sometimes it's also not even just about having your therapist respond. Sometimes it's literally about just like saying it out loud and knowing that this person is getting paid to listen to you. So they're going to listen to you. It's not a friend that has other things going on. It's not, you know, somebody that you have to say like, hey, like, are you mostly prepared to hear like what I have going on? Are you okay? Like, it's not somebody that has an exam tomorrow. So you don't want to stress them. It's they're literally getting paid to sit there and listen to you. So let it all out, <laughs> like let it all out and do it unapologetically so. That is one of the most amazing parts of therapy, just being able to just like unleash and not feel bad about it. Just be like, yeah, like you, you, that's what you're here for. Validation is another part that I love about therapy. Like after my experience of my relationship, like just feeling validated in a way that I, I never had. Cause like I said, I didn't talk to my friends about what I was going through. So nobody ever told me like, hey, like, you're right, Ashley. Like, they don't have any right to be upset. You're the one that's right. Like, nobody ever told me that. I constantly just, like, believed what he said. And, like, after he'd victimized himself, I'd apologize for, like, 
bro, that man could cheat on me, and by the end of that conversation, I would be apologizing. I don't think he ever cheated on me, not to my knowledge. I don't know, maybe he did. I don't think he ever did, though. But if he had, I could approach him and be like, you cheated on me, and then by the end of the conversation, it's my fault that he cheated, I was the problem, I was in the wrong, he's the victim, I should feel sorry for him, and somehow I'd be manipulated in that hypothetical scenario. I'd be manipulated into apologizing for not being enough. Like, that's how bad it was. Like, that's how bad it was. And if I had a therapist to validate me at that time, how things would have been different. Validation is one of the most important things that I've experienced through this time in therapy. Just somebody that I can speak to and not feel judged by, that doesn't have any biases, that doesn't know my life and the ways that my family, my friends do. Well, I mean, they do know like, my life, but it's like, just feeling validated or them telling me like, no, like you're wrong. That's also a nice thing. Cause you're like, shit, I'm wrong. How? Tell me how. And then you figure it out and you could do better. So it's a win-win, you know, perspective, a professional perspective is a beautiful thing. Just hearing what somebody else has to say when I'm being delusional, she will check me. She's not one of those Delulu is the Salulu people, of course, she's a therapist. So she will tell me when I'm being delusional and when I'm living in a fantasy. And I have no choice but to listen. I get that perspective. She'll tell me why and I'll be like, oh shit, like you're kind of right. Do you know how many times I'll be like back and forth with her? And then by the end of the conversation, I'll be like, no, you know what, you're right. Yeah, I do agree with you. I never really saw it that way. So many sessions. In the first year, I was still defensive. So I'd be like, no, 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 no. Now I'm like, damn, like I never, I never thought of that. I've, that's the first time I've ever considered that. And I do see it that way. Thank you for that. Like I just have no choice but to like agree. Cause sometimes she just knows what's best. Sometimes she doesn't. But for the most part, I feel like she knows what's best. Getting those reality checks are crucial. Lastly, my favorite pro of all, something that I think will benefit my career in the future, depending on what I choose to end up in, is my ability to ask insightful questions has improved dramatically. Like, I've always taken pride in being somebody that's very inquisitive and really good at asking questions and getting to know people. That's why I've done the YouTube series on my channel called like Drive With Me, where I'm interviewing people because I just know that I'm, it's, a, it's a skill that I have. Like, I really think I'd be like an Angie Martinez if I was an interviewer. Somebody that just gets people to open up or like a Jay Shetty. I just have this skill. And if there's one thing I can speak confidently on, it's that. Therapy has made it so much better. Like, I feel like I have personal one-on-one -on -one connections with everybody. I just get people to open up to me in spaces and places that they never would. The most random people just will like speak to me and I'll just ask them questions and make them feel important. That's why I'm an amazing dater. I am an amazing first date. Honestly, I know that. I can leave a date and I'll have like, I'll be like, oh, I didn't really like that guy but they'll leave and they'll be like in a trance because I just made them feel so important and I made them feel safe and comfortable enough to open up to me because of the way that I've inquired and like asked them questions. So like therapy really gave me that gift of being able to do that better, which I love. It's, it's honestly one of my favorite parts about myself and it's a blessing and a curse because people like to treat me like I'm their therapist. Um, but I don't, I don't like that because I find that people want to talk about themselves for like an hour or two and they don't ask me anything in return. Do you know how many people are walking around this earth that I know all of their business and they know nothing about me? A lot. I know their childhood traumas, I know their triggers, I know what makes them insecure, I know what they love, I know what they hate, I know everything. And they know nothing about me. It's wild. But yeah, therapy really gave me that gift and I'm very grateful for that. All right guys, this was a long one, but that wraps up the video. That's how I feel about therapy, my journey, the pros, the cons, and what you can expect if you do get yourself into therapy. I highly recommend being in therapy. I really do, I think you should try it out. Give it at least like three months. Don't give up, don't give up. And keep it consistent, commit to it. If you're not ready to commit, give it some time until you feel like you're ready for the commitment. But just know that when you do choose to commit, it is life-changing and it is a beautiful experience. I'm very lucky that the therapist that I ended up with, I actually really like and I'm very compatible with. If it wasn't the case, I would have found a different therapist by now, but I was very blessed. I, it, it was exactly what I need at the time and what I need now. So do your research, find somebody that makes sense to you. And if you're from Ontario and you wanna know how to get free therapy, send me a DM. And if I don't answer, send me another one, but I will respond as soon as I see it. 
because I want everybody to have access to free therapy if they can, if they're, you know, if they're able to in their country. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about therapy. I can do a follow-up video, like a QA, and a if you have questions. So just let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And oh yeah, subscribe. Subscribe. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank you.